Welcome, brothers and sisters, to another episode of God's Glory and History. I'm your host, MC Enemy. But as usual, it's not about me. It's about the Word of God and His truth on this channel. Welcome to Sabbath Fellowship. This episode is scheduled to be aired Friday, March 4th, 2022. After sundown, it is the Sabbath. Welcome, brothers and sisters. On this channel is the history that you need because Yesiah did bleed. All the rest will come when he comes on his steed. Don't forget the prayer of Paul to the Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 through 21. If you read it, it will bless you with understanding of God's word and his love for you. If you haven't done so yet or you are new to this channel, very important that you download at least two Bible apps. And we ask that you make one of those Bible apps, the 1611 King James Bible with the Apocrypha. There are additional books there that you cannot get in the standard version. And the reason why we say at least two Bible app versions, right in the middle of your screen, the facts of every case must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. In case you missed it, last week, we talked about Ukraine, an end-time player. You can go into that episode and you see what the conflict is all about in the natural and in the spiritual. The players are of biblical proportions. Go back and check it out if you haven't, haven't, haven't seen it and be blessed with that knowledge. Now, today's episode might be a little controversial. That's all right. I'm, I'm standing on the word. So your pastor is a liar if. And as a subtitle, I got 10 things to consider before you call or before calling out your pastor. So now this is one of those episodes that you must watch to the end because I'm not calling anyone a liar. And if you watch the episode to the end, you'll know why. Let's get to work. All right, first, an update on Ukraine, also known as Khazaria, also known as the political state of Israel senior. So if you go back and watch last week's episode, you'll understand what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm going to show you a little video clip, and we'll come back on the other end of that video clip. I just want you guys to, I'm going to put the sound on so you can hear it. And we will let this play. I was begging. begging. The official literally wants me my iron said in his language. Only Ukrainians, that's all. That if you're black, you should walk. I'm currently, I got in like um, the uh, 2020. It wasn't easy. On, on Friday at 8 a.m., I was. Um, the taxi couldn't steal the line of cars because literally cars are there for two days. And 
when we dropped, I said, and the power walk is nothing, you know, if it's getting us there on time. And we walked, mm -hmm. we walked, and it kept increasing. The, the term walking is traumatizing. The term walking, I walked for 12, 12 good hours. And it's not an exaggeration. The traffic warden yeah. saw me and said I should go to a shelter to sleep. And I slept, and he said the next day that there is a bus going from that shelter straight to the Polish border. And, and when it was time to get on this bus, the Ukrainians said, just Ukrainians, literally as a black person, I even lied that I was pregnant, they didn't care, I was begging. The official literally looked me in my eye and said, in his language, only Ukrainians, that's all, that if you are black, you should walk. And that was an additional 8 hours from where we were. By car, it was like 30 minutes, it isn't at the Polish border, it is at the Ukrainian border. Because you have to stop out at the Ukrainian border to get on the Polish side. And the Ukrainians are only prioritizing their citizens. They don't care. They will push you. They will beat you. I took a nap and I still, I still felt like I was still walking. Like I hadn't crossed over to go. Friends, re strategize and just be straight. Bad. Just that I didn't have money to pay what we did. I'm fighting for my life. It is a traumatizing experience. I don't know where I'm going from now. I actually have to re strategize in Hungary, try to get my ticket back to Nigeria. Because it's not safe. This place is not safe. If your skin is dark, you have disadvantage. All right, brothers and sisters, you saw that video. Even in the midst of war, they still put us at the bottom of the barrel. That skin color is just an outward sign of who you possibly are because not everybody who's swarthy, dark skin, is an Israelite. I just wanted you to see that to see the plight of uh, our people. I was begging. All right. So when you go to court, they usually, and you had to testify, they tell you, put your hand on the Bible, and they say, uh, Do you swear to tell her that the evidence that you shall uh, be, uh, give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me God. That's the oath. But then there's an affirmation that says, I solemnly affirm that the evidence that I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You and I, as believers, should only be doing the affirmation. We should not be swearing. 1611 King James Bible, Matthew chapter 5, verses 34 and 37. It is written, but I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. So what he's saying, let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. But do not swear. So we've talked about lying. So if you omit something, because even in the oath or in the affirmation, they want the whole truth. So if you leave something out, that's considered to be lying. So lying by omission is when a person leaves out important information, or fails to correct a pre-existing misconception in order to hide the truth from others. Sixteen eleven King James Bible, Daniel chapter 12, verse 9, it is written, and he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed Till the time of the end. So there were things that Daniel was told that he could he was not able to reveal to us because he was being obedient. Now, would you call Daniel a liar in that case? No, of course not. He was being obedient to the most high. That's not being a liar. Right? So you, do, you wouldn't call Daniel a liar. Now, when I started this channel about two years ago, people would ask me, 
why haven't our pastors told us this information? And they're referring to, you know, us being descendants of Jacob, also known as Israel. So we're Israelites. And, and my response was this next scripture. Revelation 1611 King James Bible, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9. It is written, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So, Right there, it tells you, you know, Satan deceived the whole world. You know, we, we were and still are mostly educated by our captors. That's where we get that Eurocentric teaching. That's all we know. But when you dive into the word and let the Holy Spirit speak to you, he brings the truth, the whole truth. And nothing but the truth, according to what he's been told to tell us. So why, why seek the truth? That's what we want. But why do we want it the truth? 1611 King James Bible, John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, it is written. And this is Jesus talking. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to wor worship him god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so my question or the question becomes did the father assign some to minister to the spirit and others to minister the truth Now, this is just me talking, but I believe that he has. So how do we get the truth? Sixteen, eleven, King James Bible, John chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. It is, it is written again. Jesus is talking. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. So that Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. That means it's a process. He's not going to just download all the information to you. And that process ends when Messiah or Jesus returns. It says he shall glorify me. That means that the Holy Spirit is going to keep you following his will for your, for your life and keep you on his path so before throwing around the terms liar and wicked pastors i have 10 things you may want to consider number one pastors do not know everything 1611 King James Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 9 through 12. It is written, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. 
I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. So when Josiah comes, the things that we know in part will be made complete. We will know all things. So think of it this way. You know, when Adam and Eve ate that uh, uh, apple, they, they got the knowledge of good and evil. But when Jesus comes, we will, um, we will also know evil, um, good and evil knowledge. So not just knowing of the knowledge of good and evil, but we will know the, the good and evil knowledge. There's a difference. Number two, you are ultimately responsible for you. 1611 King James Bible, Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. It is written, Wherefore, my beloved, this is Paul talking, ye have, all, uh, ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God with which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Number three, we are told to test them, talking about the pastors. 1611 King James Bible, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, it is written. And it's not only the pastors, it's saying, but you just listen to the, the scripture. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. This is how you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ, or Yeshua HaMashiach, is come in the flesh, is of God. And every spirit that confesses not, or every spirit that doesn't confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should, should come, and even now already is in the world. Number four, being an Israelite descendant means. 1611 King James Bible, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, it is written, now the Lord had said unto Abram, that's Abraham before his name was changed, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So let's try to break this down into something that's easier to understand. Those that bring you closer to the most high will get closer to the most high. And those that pull you away from the most high will get further away from the most high. Just imagine somebody is grabbing you by the hand and they're leading, they leading, leading, leading you to or they're leading you away from God. They'll be going in that same direction. There was a point in my life when um, I was being held back from a position that I, I went to school for and studied and graduated and I was getting discouraged and a little depressed. And my mother was able to see that I was a little upset. And she said to me one day, as long as that person is holding you down, he ain't going anywhere either. It's a pretty deep statement. I never forgot it. 
the moral of that story is that you have to be ready because at some point that person holding you down has to get up. If they want to move forward or backward or move at all, they have to get up off of you. Never forgot that. Number five, pastors have been instructed and we have been warned. 1611 King James Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 through 4. It is written, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That's patience and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears, itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. So people are not going to be listening to sound doctrine. And why won't they listen to sound doctrine? Because they haven't read and understood and got the Holy Spirit to explain the doctrine to them to begin with. They haven't been studying their word. Number six, be careful whose name is in your mouth. 1611 King James Bible, Psalms 105, verse 15, it is written, saying, touch not mine anointing, and do my prophets no harm. If you've been reading this book, you know that the Most High has destroyed many people that were against those being obedient. You and I don't know what that person was instructed to reveal. Like Daniel. He told Daniel, don't say certain things. Close the book. So you and I, who are we to be saying what they were told to say and what they weren't to say? Number seven, the Most High operates on a need-to-know basis. 1611 King James Bible, Matthew, chapter 24, verses 34 through 36. It is written, Jesus is talking, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. So even Josiah, even Jesus himself was not privy to everything. So what makes you and I think that any of us knows everything? Number eight, the Most High has a time and a place for everything. 1611 King, King James Bible, Ecclesiastes chapter three, verses one through eight. It is written. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, time to die, time to plant, time to pluck up which that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend or tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time to war, and a time of peace. Number nine, the wicked pastors, and there are some wicked pastors, will get theirs. 
Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 2 through 4, it is written, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, or pastors. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Shouldn't the shepherds be feeding the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have not, have you not strengthened? Neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. So he doesn't really tell us what the punishment will be, but when he says woe unto a particular class or people or person, it's not good. Number 10, be encouraged. So that same Ezekiel chapter 34, 1611 King James Bible, look at uh, verses 11 through 16. It is written, For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries. And I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountain of, mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in, good, in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost, and will bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. I, but I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. So that's the other part of that, that where he told, said, woe unto the pastors. But now you can see they're going to be fed with judgment. So if you want to be one of those sheep, that's going to be gathered. I got a suggested prayer for you. If you read this suggested prayer, pause the video. I'll be there on the other side. You read this with sincerity in your heart. I want to be the first to welcome you to the family. Now on this channel, we don't make orphans. So we're going to assist you in your walk. So three things for you to grow your faith. Number one is for you to read your Bible daily. Now, I know people say they don't know how to read the Bible. Well, I got you covered. If you go back to episode 62, it's simply titled How to Read the Bible. It will guide you step by step, tell you which sections to read and why you're reading them in that order. Number two, find a Bible-based place for you to grow. I didn't say go, I said grow. This place must feed your spirit and mind. And step number three, pray without ceasing. So many of us pray all the time, which is talking with our father. But many of us don't do step number one, which is read your Bible, which is him speaking back to you. So you're being one of those 
one-way friends who dominate the conversation and don't let the other friend get a word in edgewise. Don't do that. All right, remember, set your phones, 12.34 a.m. and p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's the time where we cap for Christ. We simply take 60 seconds to meditate with the phrase kumbaya, come by God. We're looking forward to his return. And in these last and evil days, we really need him to come and, and, and quicken the pace. All right, you can catch us on Facebook. You can follow us on Facebook. The rest of the channels, you can subscribe, HebrewConnect.tv, YouTube, and now Rumble as well. If you like this episode or, and it has blessed you, please give it the thumbs up to get that algorithm up. But more importantly, share this with others. Any comments or concerns, you can drop me a line in the description or the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And also consider subscribing to this channel. All right, brothers and sisters. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys for all the support. As always, I want you to worship the Father, praise the Son, and accept the Holy Spirit. And may our Lord and Savior grant you his peace that surpasses all understanding. May it rest, rule, and abide with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Oh